Okay, so at this point right here, you're gonna notice I've sewn along that one fourth inch line that I created at the bottom, and then I have sewn along the top. And when I look at it, I could take and fold it back in half. Doesn't matter, I can do that. Now it's two-sided. But I don't want this side to be showing because this is all gonna come fray and everything. So, and besides that, it's not the pretty side of the material. So now I have to turn it right side, which is the pretty side, out. And this is kind of weird. But you reach in there and you pull it, pull your edges down, reach in there and pull it, pull it, pull those edges down. Pretty soon it becomes more easier than not. And then get it all the way turned inside out. And at this part, it looks point, it looks like totally weird. But stay with me, my friends. Okay, at this point, we're gonna take this top edge where the black and the green or your two colors are met, and I'm gonna kind of get it so that if you were to be able to look inside right here, you'd be able to see your stitching. And I'm gonna put a pin, I'm gonna have this, I'm gonna use a pin to kind of pull out the edges. I'm gonna reach in there with my pin, right where the two materials come together, oh look, there is my stitch. Can you see that right there on my needle? And I'm gonna take and put my pin in there. Now if you happen to have some pins in your, in your house, you might wanna go get these because then you can do a really nice pin job because we want the edge of that thread, edge where those two materials were sewn right together I wanna take and pull them right out so they're right up at the top. This is where you're gonna make your mask even look kinda of sloppy if you, if you don't get that pulled out just so. Okay, right now I've used four of my pins and oh my goodness, I'm only halfway through. So I might have to take and go halfway and then finish pinning the other half. I just might have to do that. But if you're to look at that, you can't see the black, can ya? And from this side right here, can't really see the green, can you? That's my hope, is that I want it to look like it doesn't have a different color on it. Okay. All right, so I've run out of pins. I'm gonna stop right there and I'm gonna sew a little bit until I can take some pins out. Now, at this point right here, I am hoping that you can sew a straight line. I'm gonna take about 18 inches again. Does that sound new? And I'm gonna take that thread. Don't say that I didn't put that in my mouth. I spit it up. It's true, you do. And we're gonna thread that needle. I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna tie that knot by making a loop. There's once into the hole in her end. Uh, whoops. Let's try that one more time. A second time into that hole in her end and a third time. Grab the little tail and give it a nice little yank. And there we got that knot. I'm gonna take and cut off that end. And we're in good shape. Okay, let's go do the sewing again. I'm gonna start out by taking one stitch. And just cause I wanna reinforce it, I go and I take that one stitch one more time right into it. Then, oh my goodness, can you hear the yelling that's happening in my house? I got someone downstairs playing a video game. All right, I'm gonna pull that out as I come along. I'm gonna go and sew this one and back and forth and back and forth. The same thing that you were doing in the very beginning, you're doing the same thing all over again. And this is stitching's gonna show, and it's meant to show. It has a name, it's called top stitching to do it on top. You might recognize top stitching from maybe your jeans where um, the thread is kind of an orange or maybe a white color. Oops, come on, come on out of there. And it's meant to show. So you wanna make sure that the stitching is nice and even as best you can in the end. It's not gonna make or break your product. It's gonna take and help it stay pressed where you want it to be flat like this and it's also gonna be a little bit decorative. 
if you wanted it to be super decorative. Now I know that not all of your threads are gonna match both sides. Maybe you've got pink thread that's got a pink and brown print on it, or maybe you've got a orange and black print and on one side and black on the other. I mean, there's all sorts of color combinations here. Um, like on this side, you're gonna be able to see my black thread really easily. But on my other side that is black, let me flip that over, you can hardly see it at all, except for when I go through a white polka dot. All right, now I'm coming to the end right here of where I've got some pins. So I'm gonna stop for half a second and I'm just gonna let my needle dangle and I'm going to grab these pins and I'm gonna finish pinning the rest of this way down this one side. I'm just again, sewing again the sides that I've already sewn and pulling up the, where the stitches are at. You can see that sometimes the material's way down tucked there so it doesn't wanna come out so very much. And again, I'm gonna pull this out, pull it out pull it out and then you're gonna take and stick a pin in there to hold it where you want it to be so that your sewing looks really good. All right, so I'm gonna grab my needle back where I was at, get rid of those guys, I've passed them. And let's go ahead and let your needle do the work. Or sorry, let your fabric do the work and the needle's just kind of hanging in the middle. Don't let the stitches get too big, they again should be maybe about an eighth of an inch or less. I'm gonna go all the way down to the end. <clears throat> now you might notice that your fingers might start to feel a little sensitive to the, to the needle, the pushing of that needle back and forth. There is a piece of equipment that many people who sew a lot use and it's called a thimble. And the thimble's gonna take and protect your flesh. Some people though don't like to sew with them. They'd rather have a hurt finger for years, I couldn't get the feel of a thimble. And now, right now, I think it feels really funny not to have it. You know, funny, I'll just tie a knot and I have to have a thimble on my finger. All right, as we get to the end, we're gonna go ahead and end this up the same way that we ended before. And I'm going to take and tie a knot. How do I tie a knot? You might ask yourself that. Or you might say, uh, I already know. I'm gonna take, go right to the end, I'm gonna take a little tiny stitch and I'm gonna pull that till there's just a loop. Then I'm gonna go through the loop and then I take the exact same stitch in the exact same spot, just a little teeny tiny thing, maybe a couple threads worth. Pull that, go through the loop, give it a nice little tug and then go ahead and clip this. Now, you've done one side. Guess what I'm gonna tell you to do? Don't get too excited, because you gotta do the second side. And my friends, I could take and have you watch this another time, or I could just say, you're gonna do the same thing. If you need to re -see, you need to see what I'm doing, rewind, repeat, watch again. I'm again going in here and I'm pulling out the stitching, I'm pulling up on it. I'm trying to get it so the stitching is right at the edge so that the material cannot roll out any more than it already is. That the top of the green and the top of the black meet there. And if you were to pull those two apart, you would find that there are some threads there. The thread is there, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pause right here I'm gonna sew this other side and I'll show you then what's next.